I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, your guide to art, culture, and tourism here in Tokyo and throughout Japan. I'm Stuart Monroe, and around this time each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'll be sharing local news and views. On today's episode, Valentine's Day with a difference. But first, sightseeing. A common sight during spring and summer months on the Edegawa and Sumida rivers are Yakatabune, traditional style pleasure cruises long and thin, the doublers floating restaurants, each complete with tatami, cushions, and low slung tables. They're a sign of relaxation, serving food, dispensing drink. But when they first appeared, these boats were a privileged pastime. Yakatabene were introduced during the Heian period from 794 to 1185 and were hallmarks of the wealthy and powerful, the feudal lords, samurai, and merchants. It wasn't until much later that Yakotobune served the masses sometime in the late 19th century. Now one company's bidding to transform them once again, running them all on Sesteo, a next-generation biodiesel fuel, in the hope of making these floating dining halls as carbon neutral as possible. And in a bid to underline their cultural importance post-pandemic, the Tokyo government's hoping to update the entire fleet by 2050. Euglena was founded in 2005, and began developing biofuel five years later with oil and fat extracted from algae. The company even built a biofuel production plant in 2018, hoping to produce 55,000 gallons per year by 2025. Indeed, Yakatobene could all be running on Susteo by then, with over 60 other companies already having adopted the biofuel in buses, ships and even aircraft. Activists are battling Tokyo government to preserve two historic sports venues in the iconic tree-lined avenue of the Meiji Jingu. Tokyo is in the final stages to demolish and replace Jingu Stadium, the world's fourth oldest baseball ground, as well as the 75-year-old Prince Chichibu Stadium, home to Japan's rugby football union. Jingu Stadium first opened in 1926 and is the spiritual home of college baseball. It even hosted Babe Ruth and Lou Gehring on their pivotal 1934 tour of Japan. Now, it's simply home to the Yakult Swallows. The three other stadiums, Chicago's Wrigley Field, Boston's Fenway Park and Nishiyomiya's Kashian Stadium, are still in action and have either been remodelled or updated over time, an approach missing from plans to revitalise an area the government now considers worn out and beyond repair. And finally, ice near the central Hokkaido town of Kamishi Horo is now billowing from a nearby lake in what's become an annual phenomenon. The local Otafuki River was sealed off years ago, forming Lake Nukubira and powering the town's hydroelectric dam. But the freezing weather and shallow water causes ice to freeze downward. And these columns of ice push the ice back through the river's frozen surface, forming mushroom shapes measuring a metre or more in diameter. All can be seen along with the Taoshao Betsu River Bridge, nicknamed the Phantom Bridge, until the end of February. With the price of chocolate going up, some are looking for alternatives to Valentine's Day this year. And while the tradition in Japan is as big as anywhere, despite being a product of mid-80s advertising, February the 14th is also known for two very different, well-established reasons. One of these is Niboshi no Hi, or Dried Sardine Day, where Niboshi can be read as 214 or February the 14th. It also translates as boiled and dried. The date was established by the National Niboshi Association in 1994 to encourage the eating of dried sardines. At first, it was merely a date in the calendar without celebration or publicity. But one conversation on local radio caused such sensation that February the 14th for many became known as Niboshi no Hi. Some manufacturers gave it their seal of approval, adding the association's logo mark, 
to packaging. The dried sardine, which measures no more than two or three centimetres in length, can be enjoyed as a snack rich in calcium, even soaked in water overnight, and used to make a dashi or cooking stock. The other alternative to Valentine's Day this year is more of a test of endurance than expression of love. Fundoshi no hi, or loincloth day, sounds pretty ridiculous when you say it in English, but the day's also a rite of passage set against the freezing February weather, marking the end of winter and beginning of spring. Men from all over the country travel to Kokuseki Temple in Iwati Prefecture, wearing nothing but fundoshi made from a length of cotton. The endurance test involves trekking from the temple to the frozen Ruritsubo River, to be the first to grab the prize Somin Bukuro, or sacred bag, believing it to bring them a year of health and happiness. Well, rather than the me. That's it for this episode of Notebook. Be sure to check in on Friday, February the 17th. If you enjoyed this or any of the episodes so far this year, and throughout 2022, you can rate us on Apple Podcasts or spread the word online. You can also email the Notebook team, notebook.podcast at gmail.com, or even leave a voice message at speakpipe.com forward slash notebook with thoughts for future episodes. Until next time though, thanks for listening. This has been Notebook.